Okay, we're first going to work through blue eyes. And I want you to make notes um, at what focus. So I'm going to say photo this to photo that is going to be this. Photo this and photo that is going to be that. Okay, so make a few notes. You can see in your book that you have over here, this book, the at page 20, it's your systematic way that you actually look at the eye. Okay, that's important. So that is how we start looking at the eye, right? Why do you look puzzled? Yeah. Are you okay? Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to put the eye chart up here. And as we move through the eyes, I'm going to start off with the eyes. So you can just, and after about the third or fourth eye, you'll actually start seeing the system that I follow. And you just keep on following it with me. <coughs> and then we'll go through the class and say, okay, you analyze it for me. And she's going to analyze one eye. And as we go through, and that is how we practice. This is it practical all the time out here? That's the easiest way to learn iridology is to do practical over, over, over that you have to do, okay? Because you look at all the different colors. So if you look systematically, so I'm going to put this chart up to divide it up. And then as we move through, we always start. And, I'm, and also with your assignment as well, when you present, I'm going to, you're going to follow this specific um, line over here. You're going to start explaining the patient what is iridology. I mark you on that. Then the photos. I'm going to look at your quality of photos and, and I'm going to give you a mark as well for that. So for each type of color eye, I'm going to give you a mark for each one of them. So if you've got rubbish photos and I can't see anything, I'm going to give you zero. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to fail the rest of the thing because you can't see anything on the eye. And if you show me a big brown blob and it's out of focus and you talk nonsense, I'm going to tell you you're talking nonsense. I'm going to fail you. So your photos are very, very important. You have to take good quality photos or else you cannot see um, on that eyes, okay? And then you'll actually find the next one, because we determine the genetics, and we, we then actually look at the left eye. We're only going to focus on left eyes, like I explained yesterday. When we look at your eyes tomorrow, or um, Monday, then we'll go over to left and then right. And then we're going to look at the timeline. So we're going to spend a lot of time with each one of you. So the first person, and I'll look at the eyes then, don't be surprised if we spend three to four hours with each person. And it sounds crazy, how can you spend four hours with a person? The amount of detail in the eye, you'll actually find. And if you start going at the timeline, you say, okay, what happened to you at that age? And you tell the story. Mm -hmm. And crying or laughing or whatever doing, the whole group must help you to actually support that. Okay? But also don't be scared if you look at your timelines. There's no, if I, look, if I look at the timeline for you and I see there was a big trauma, just acknowledge and say yes. You don't have to go into detail. I don't want to know the detail if you don't want to share any details, okay? If you want to share the detail, you're a healer, and you want to share it with the, with the rest of the class, we also keep it to ourselves as well. We don't go and put it on Facebook what happened, okay? That is what healers do. You keep stuff to yourself. You share stuff. But don't incriminate other people and make uh, uh, people uncomfortable. So and if, if I you say, use a reference, uh, no. you never uh, tell somebody uh, the name or the person. No, I don't name. actually like to use names over here. So yesterday I, I mentioned mm. a few names, but it will be edited on the on the videos. There's no names. You don't as soon as like they talk about that, I switch it off. Yeah, because it can just cause problems at the old end. So if you have, so don't be scared if you look at your timeline. If you don't want to talk about it, say, I acknowledge I had a big problem. You can actually say, if you want to, you can say, this happened, but I don't want to talk about it. Then we all know we just move on. Later on, you maybe feel in tea time, you want to go and talk to somebody else, then you're more than welcome to them. Maybe you don't want to share it in the class. Maybe you're a private person. I don't know. Each one of us have a different personality. Sometimes you say, okay, well, I will come and talk to Trudy afterwards, or maybe I'll go and see a psychiatrist, or maybe I'll go and see a Sangoma, or whatever. So it's your choice. So please don't be scared. We're not going to force you in anything over here. Okay, so just chill. You don't have to run away tomorrow or the day after and say, oh, gonna, we're going to look in your eyes. Don't worry about that, okay? But I think you're all healers and you actually all work with people all the time. So if we work with other people, we are also vulnerable as well. And because we are healers, we must probably add um, a lot of issues ourselves. The best healers that you find is healers that had a lot of issues and dealt with it. They actually make the best healers. Okay. Right, so if we start over this eye, this will 